Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of No More Excuses Podcast, where I, Sandy Ballard, the host, the badass business coach, I'm your host, where I tackle the tough topics and empower you to take control of your business, your life, and your success. Thank you again for being here, for investing in you, and I'd love to hear from you. I haven't asked for a while, haven't heard from a while, from you for for a while. Where are you listening from? What city, state, country? Where are you? Please comment in the in the post where you're seeing wherever you're seeing this. Direct message me or email me, Sandy with an I, Sandy at sandyballard.com. I love hearing from my listeners. And there you go. So thank you. Thanks again for being here. And today. I want to dive into this whirlwind world of business ownership and how to manage the mania that comes with it. Uh, It's one of the things I I tend to say when I'm out networking, helping you manage the mania of business ownership. So let's face it, folks, running a business is not for the faint of heart. It's going to be a roller coaster ride, lots of highs and lows, twists and turns. And some days it can be that big adrenaline rush of when you're at the top and you're just plummeting down. Also like skydiving. If you've ever been skydiving, it's crazy cool. So business ownership can be like that. Adrenaline rush in a good way. And other times a way that's going to take your breath away, not in a good way. But amidst the chaos, there's one thing that we can't afford to lose sight of. Our sanity. (laughs) It's time to embrace the madness, folks. Business ownership it's gonna gonna kick you around like riding a wild bull. You gotta hang on tight and just go with it and just go with it. Roll with the punches, go with the flow. Instead of fighting the chaos, embrace it. Accept that there will be ups and downs. Accept that there's gonna be victories and setbacks. And find the strength in the middle of the shit storm. <laughs> so how do you ask? How do you handle this? by setting boundaries. One of the biggest challenges of business ownership is knowing when to say enough is enough. It's easy to get caught up in the never ending cycle of work. It's easy to go to bed thinking about work and stressing about it, dreaming about it, waking up in the middle of the night. I used to do that and keep a notepad. And sometimes now I just email myself, but gets it out of your head. But then you wake up and you're already stressed. You're already running 10 miles down the road. You know, we've got to figure out how to to pull in and set those boundaries so we don't have to uh, embrace the chaos in a bad way. You know, we because that's going to risk burnout. We're going to just burn out super fast and then just be exhausted and not be good mentally or physically for our family, our friends, right? We've got to set clear boundaries for work and play and stick to them like glue, right? I know what you're thinking, but Sandy, how do I manage this? How the hell do I manage the mania of business ownership without losing my mind? Well, fear not, my friends. I've got some badass tips to help you navigate the chaos like a pro. Besides the big overarching one, setting boundaries, you've got to learn to prioritize your priorities. Say that 10 times fast. Prioritize your priorities. I preach this all the time. I do it myself. Even last night before I called it a night, I went back and I was like, okay, where's my to-do list? Because I've been out of town. And I looked at everything and I was like, here's on a little post-it note that went on top of my big to-do list. There are the main things I need to get done today or at that time tomorrow when when I get up and start going, right? So prioritize your priorities. You know, identify the tasks and responsibilities that are absolutely essential to your business's success and focus your time and energy on those things. Just get in there and don't let anything distract you. You know, everything else can wait till later. Of course, you know, you're like, but Sandy, I own a retail store or I, you know, have customers and clients who calling, texting, emergency, emergency. Well, Only you can decide if it's truly an emergency. If you have customers coming in the door, you're not going to ignore them, right? But you've got to make sure that priority is your customer. So are you able to fully engage with them? Or can you delegate like a boss? 
tip number two. You know, if you don't have to help that customer or answer that phone, please don't, right? You know, repeat after me. I am not a one person army. Okay, so maybe you're a sole proprietor like me. So you are a one woman, one man, one person army. But who do you have around you that can help you? Can you delegate? Can you hire a virtual assistant? Can you get an intern? Can you hire someone? Do it or pay for it, right? You've got to stop trying to do it all yourself. Look at what's not getting done and delegate the, the tasks to trusted team members or like I said, outsource them to some freelancers. There are virtual assistants literally everywhere, right? You, you've got to figure out how to do that. And by prioritizing your priorities and figuring out what keeps falling down the list and what is getting added onto the next day, the next day, the next day, that is what you'll have to learn how to delegate and then figuring out who, who to delegate to. All right, and now I wanna share a personal story with all of you. Uh, this is not my first business. I've been coaching for about 13 years. I've been an entrepreneur for almost 30, right? When I first started my first business, I was a one woman show, still juggling a million tasks, burning the candle at both ends and driving myself nuts. I was exhausted. I had a friend tell me, I said, do I look tired? And he goes, you always look tired. I was like, oh, oh my gosh, do I really? I had that wake up call that woke me up. And my chiropractor, Dr. Zimmer, thank you, love you. He told me, girl, you, you're burning the candle at both ends. I can feel it in your back. I can feel it in your neck. You've got to figure something out. It was at that moment that I realized I couldn't keep this crazy ass pace up forever. You know, superwoman, superman, whoever you are, you think you can do it all, right? I needed, and you probably do too, to take a step back, reassess my priorities, prioritize my priorities, and make some freaking changes. And I did just that. I set boundaries. I delegated tasks to whoever I could figure out who to help me because sometimes I could afford to hire someone. Sometimes I couldn't, you know, over the 29, almost 30 years, there's times where it's been thick and thin. I've been up on that top of the mountain, screaming from the mountaintops going, yes. And then I've been down in those valleys going, what the fuck? <laughs> so, you know, multiple businesses over those years, you're going to have a lot of different shit coming at you. But you know what? All of that revelation all of this, having those people be honest to me was what made the difference, was what helped me make the changes. Recently, I came back from a business trip and I actually got sick on the business trip. It was like two and a half days of just like, Whoa, what the hell? So I only did the meetings I had to do. And then I caught them all up, got home, but then my flight was changed and I landed about three hours late by the time I got food and dinner, or food is dinner, and to bed, it felt like it was 2 a.m. because of the time change. So needless to say, the next day, I was exhausted. And so I decided to take Monday for me. You may have seen the post where it said, no podcasts. I'm, I'm gone, I've gone beaching. <laughs> I, I went to the beach, I relaxed. And then on Tuesday, it was game on. You know, it's not easy calling in sick when you're, you're are your own boss, you know? Mine's a bitch sometimes, but hey, she also is pretty cool. She's pretty badass. You know, I purposely fill in Mondays and block it out in case of days or weekends or just needing the mental time, not necessarily always to take it easy, but to get things done that fall down on my list so I can feel caught up. But this last... Monday, I needed that mental break. I needed to get rest, get sleep and rejuvenate, you know? And, and that was it. I remember when I very first started, so almost 30 years ago, my first business, it took me five years and a kid to take my first vacation. And I remember my, one of my, my staff person called me and she was all freaked out and panicking. And I'm like, 
I don't know, something had just clicked in me. And, and this was before my friend told me I was always tired. I said, you know, relax. The world is not going to burn down because we need a little more time to work on this project. And it took a little bit of time. So maybe that was the first moment I was stepping into coaching, helping someone relax that isn't, isn't used to being able to ask a client for a little bit extra time or taking the time to look at things and for having the boss away, right? You know, I've worked with clients too over the years. I'm sure you can imagine that who have never even taken a vacation. They've never taken a true vacation. They would say, oh, I've taken time off work. Their trips or conferences for work. Maybe a little bit uh, here and there for a restaurant, you know, to find a, a cool restaurant or go look at something fun or something local, but not like a vacation, right? You know, even adding on a couple days can be fun, but not always. A lot of times when I would speak at conferences, I would always build in a couple days before or after, usually after, just so I know I can decompress and, and make sure I'm on point for the talk. But, you know, you've got to, to take that time. And one client in particular, she knows who she is. It took her over 10 years of having her business and a kid. Oh, those pesky kids. But her, her son was, was it five or six? I think he was six before she actually took time off. And while she was pregnant, we actually did a, a one week staycation. So she did not go into the office. She practiced being away for maternity leave. And then six years later, she's actually taken her son on vacation. She's going on vacation herself. She's planning trips in the future. She's using all the airline miles she has built up over these years. And I love it for her and her business partner does too. And she's, she said, I, after she came back from one, I'm like, how's it feel? She's like, wow, why did I wait so long? And is this what people normally do? Yes. Yes. Once you take time for you mentally, you can, you know, you've got to have heard me say this by now. It's how you show up. If you've got so much shit rolling around in your head, it looks like a big, big uh, scribble, right? You know, wherever that scribble is not, it's all you're showing up for your clients, your customers, your, your patients, your family, your friends, and you. So if you're feeling exhausted, drained, overwhelmed, frustrated, frazzled, you probably need some mental time off, right? You know, running a business is not a mar is a marathon, not a sprint. But we sometimes jump in and just take off because we're we're having fun. It's exciting. It can be exciting and it can be fun, but it's going to be hard work. And you need to make sure you, the motor of it all, is running optimally, running at at least 98%, right? You've got to take care of you if you want to cross that finish line in one piece. Make time for rest, relaxation, and rejuvenation like I did on Monday. And don't feel guilty about it. Your sanity and your business will thank you for it, right? So will your customers. So that's all I have for today, people. Remember to set up those boundaries. Prioritize your priorities and delegate however you can. And remember, you're not alone in this crazy ass journey. So don't be afraid to reach out for support to me, to another coach, to a mentor, to a friend or family member, which please make sure they're on board and supportive of you and your goals and dreams, right? So until next time, stay badass, stay sane. And remember, there are no excuses when it comes to taking control of your business and your life. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers.